What is up YouTube? It's your boy Tony Holiday, back at it again with another video. Today I want to talk to you about one of the fundamentals of music production and that's compression or using a compressor. Anytime you read these posts in music forums or communities, people asking what's the first thing that they should do when they start learning music production, someone always comments with saying equalization or EQ and also learning how to use a compressor or a compression. We're going to go over the actual compressor plugin that we have in Logic, all the different knobs, all the different settings, and then I'm going to actually take the compressor and apply those concepts to a drum loop that I made to show you how to make your mixes clean, full, and do what people call gluing together a mix. Before we get started, make sure to go follow your boy on all social platforms. That's Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, Facebook. It's Tony Holiday. Let's get straight into this tutorial about using a compressor or the concept of compression in Logic Pro. All right, you guys, so to start off today, I don't have a blank slate for you, but I just have a couple things that I put in here. So the first one we have is actually just this kind of big EDM kick here. This is just a four on the floor kick. I'm gonna show you how compression actually takes a hold of that. The second one I have here today is a drum loop at the top. We're gonna apply the concepts that I show you, kind of give you an idea of how you can use uh, compression together. Compression is, like I said, one of the fundamentals of music production. What it's doing is it's actually taking the wave file that we have, smushing it, or gain reducing uh, different transients that we tell it to. And that really helps when you're trying to just make things a little tighter, make your mixes sound better. Overall, it's just going to help you with a better song. So to get a compressor started in Logic, go to the side here, go to audio effects, down to dynamics, compressor, stereo. What we can also do, click this little bar above the EQ. It's going to open up a compressor for us as well. This is what the stock compressor in Logic looks like. And there's actually a couple different settings here. Platinum Digital is the one that comes up first. We have the Studio VCA, the Studio FET, the Classic VCA, Vintage VCA, Vintage FET, and Vintage Opto. All of these are actually for different transients and different different instruments and things like that. And what you can do is actually go onto apple.com and I'll link this in the description. There's a page on Logic there where it actually tells you which one of these compressors is good for which type of instrument or if it's vocals and things like that. I won't get too much into that today. I just want to go over the basics of compression, but I will link that below so you can take a look at it. In this tutorial, we're going to be using the Platinum Digital. That's the default one that comes up. What we're going to do to start this off so I can explain the concept, I'm going to turn the threshold all the way to zero dB, the ratio down to one, the makeup we're going to leave at zero, the auto gain off, the auto uh, button down here, which actually has to do with the attack and release. And the knee we're going to put to around 0.5. Attack at the bottom, release at the bottom as well. With these settings that we just made, the compressor is not going to act at all on our wave file here. I put my headphones on and kind of give you an example. Now, if we play this, we can watch the meter here and it's actually not going to do anything. The meter here is not moving at all. If you did the graph, as you can see that it just has the transients there, but there's no white line coming down to actually compress the signal. There's six knobs here, the main knobs of a compressor. We have a threshold, ratio, makeup gain, knee, attack, and release. The two main knobs that you're gonna most likely be using, the threshold knob here and the ratio. What the threshold is, is it's actually kind of a ceiling for what your wave files transients are. Right now we have it at zero dB. This essentially is a compressor that has no effect on the wave file. If we lower this, say we have it at like negative 10 dB, now any transients that go over negative 10 are going to be compressed. That's where the ratio comes in. They're gonna be compressed by the ratio that we've set, by a ratio of two to one. You can see when I made that difference here, the graph actually changed as well. And this gives you a little bit of a visualizer if you're trying to look at what compression looks like. Go back to the meter here. I'm gonna play the same loop for you with the threshold threshold set at negative maybe like 20. We're going to overdo it a little bit just to kind of give you an idea of what that means. And the ratio to say maybe like to four to one. The release will turn up to about 100 milliseconds. You can see our meter here was going up to about negative 10 decibels of gain reduction. That didn't sound like I, the way I'd want to have it if I was to make a song with this. However, again, we are just showing this to kind of give you the concept of compression. Moving on to the other knobs here, I'll give you just a quick explanation of how they work. Makeup here, this is actually what's known as makeup gain. When you have your auto gain off, this is the knob that you're going to use to kind of affect the gain. For example here, if we go back to our graph and I play this loop, you can see here about how much reduction has been done. Now what the makeup gain would do, takes the new signal that's been made, it gives it a gain as that new signal to move up. The compressor is gonna take off the transients that we've asked it to, at say, at this one we have it at negative 20. They've compressed them by a ratio of four to one. The makeup gain is gonna take our new signal, give it gain again if we wanna make it louder. This is an interesting one and probably one that I get the most questions about. You could have two types of knees. Now there's a soft knee and a hard knee. What the knee is, is it kind of gives it like how much the signal is affected right away by the compressor, if that makes sense. For example, if we have the knee all the way to the left, that's what's going to be known as a hard knee. You can see here the signal kind of comes up like that 
and goes straight across. As soon as it hits negative 20.5, the threshold here, the compressor is gonna kick in with the ratio at four to one right away. There's not any kind of uh, wiggle room or anything like that. If I do bring the knee all the way to one, it doesn't quite have that same direct change of action here. That makes the compressor actually kind of more smoothly come in. It's not just a hard cutoff right at 20.5. Again, that's something that is gonna be, you know, dependent on what you're doing with compression, depending on what you're compressing. If you want the compressor to just be all the way balls to the wall right away, or if you want it to actually kind of smoothly come into it. The last two knobs I'm gonna show you here is the attack and the release. The attack is gonna be actually at what point after the signal has hit negative 20.5, how fast it's going to come in. For example here, if I close our compressor, zoom in on our uh, kick here, beginning transient right at the top. If we really wanted to keep that, what we can do is open up the compressor again. We could have the attack maybe you say at like 10 milliseconds and that's gonna kind of preserve those transients at the very beginning. And then it's gonna come in right after that. The release is gonna be the kind of opposite, how long the compressor is actually affecting the signal and how long we've uh, allowed it to affect the signal. We set it at 200 milliseconds or 240, pardon me. We walk Watch this actual meter when we turn it on, you'll see it's not quite as tightly moving. It's actually affecting it quite uh, like a lot longer. Play this loop really quick here. As you can see, the meter is actually not even going back to zero. It's just staying at that compressed level. Whereas if we have the release, so maybe a little bit less, say at like 10 milliseconds, you will watch the meter again and it'll just be a very quick movement. It's not going back to zero, but it has a lot more movement in it than as if it was when it was at 200 milliseconds, it was literally just staying at around negative 10 decibels of compression. The auto here is actually going to affect the uh, auto release as well. I never use that. I typically just set the release and the attack on my own. Input gain here is going to be the gain that you set your wave file when it comes in at. The output after the compressor. We have all these other parameters as well. We can throw a limiter on there. We can throw distortion. If we're looking to do parallel compression, that's what this knob is going to be for the mix. The output gain is going to be the last thing before you're moving on to your next plugin. In the top right corner here, we also have this sidechain button and that's gonna open up the sidechain section of our compressor. I'm not gonna get too much into this, but essentially what sidechaining is, telling a compressor to affect the uh, wave file that we've selected only when something else comes in. Another really cool thing about the Logic Compressor is it comes with these presets here. So if you go up to this factory default window here, you can see down here is one drums, two keyboard, three guitars, four voice, compressor tools, compressor by type. Now these are all gonna be different settings that Logic has made as presets. If you're kind of just trying to do a quick and dirty, click on that and this is going to be a good place to start. If you're doing like a classical guitar, classic guitar, this is going to be a good compressor to have a starting point and then you can affect it from here. These compressors all affect the instruments differently and they're based off of real old hardware compressors. So something I really want to show with this kick before we move on here, I'm going to set this compressor to very high like I had it before. It'll do 20, 4.4 to 1 ratio. The attack will do like four seconds and release like that. The knee will leave as is. Let's take a listen to the kick with the compressor off and then I'll turn it on halfway and you can kind of hear and take a look on the meter here and what it's affecting. So this is with the compressor off and then So as you can see here, these are our transients coming up. The white is what's happening to the actual file. So it's uh, being compressed. Now I'm actually gonna bounce out this kick and then we can show you the wave files and compare. So you select this by clicking on the EDM kick, do control B to bounce in place, hit okay. Now we have a bounced version of what we just had. We kind of let the uh, beginning happen here because we let the attack off a bit. It gets compressed right away there into kind of a nice way smoother little transient. And this is dependent on what kind of sound you actually want when you are using compression. Now that I've shown you that example and kind of explained the basics of how a compressor works, I'm gonna show you this drum loop that I made. We're gonna actually glue it together with a compressor. Mute this EDM kick. We're gonna unmute the drum loop. Take a listen to this really quick. We had the kick in there. A couple different things going on in this loop. Clap, hi-hat, and open hat also have this glass kind of ting going on. Take the drum loop. It's been sent to this bus here, bus number one. Throw on a compressor. So we essentially just want to take the transients that are a little bit too far out and we just want to glue it together. Just set a minimal compression here. I'll set the threshold to zero. I'll put the ratio to about 1.4 to one. Auto gain off, auto release off. Tack we'll put on right away or maybe a little bit off. So I'll play the loop. Just move this threshold down to where I can hear the actual loop tightening up a little bit. I'll show you what I mean right now.
that's going to sound just a little bit like a tighter of a loop. Obviously, the ratio is not very much, and I can move that up a little bit. So in this case, I'll probably put it up to like maybe two or something like that. That's kind of how you can tighten up or what people say is gluing the mix together to kind of give you a better outcome of what you have. But yeah, guys, with that being said, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, give your boy a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe. I'm always putting out more videos. I love the when you guys comment. You can give me more ideas for videos. Take compression, learn it, test it, do different things like that because that's going to make your ears better. It's going to make your mixes better. It's going to make your songs better. Make sure to go follow your boy. That's on Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, and Facebook. It's Tony Holiday. But thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers. Tony, take me somewhere. somewhere. somewhere.